Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, I just kind of want to talk about building up game objects with components and you know, how many components is a good number. How many is too many? How many is probably not enough? And you know, what's a, a good number of components to actually have on your game object to make the thing work? I've had some a lot of questions about this, really. Just people wonder, you know, I've got five different scripts on my game object. Is that too many? Um, you know, because I guess if you start off, it, it could feel like you've got a lot of stuff there and it can get a little bit confusing. And depending on how your scripts are set up, it could be a problem. Now, personally, I prefer to have quite a few different scripts on my objects. I want them to be all very independent and I want them to each do one thing, do that one thing really well and not really rely on any big monolithic classes. So I've seen plenty of asset packs in games, and I've done it in the past myself, where you have, you know, one big weapon script, for instance, and then this weapon script has, you know, maybe 40, 50 different options on it to toggle. Is it a projectile shooting? Is it shooting bullets that go instantly? Is it a beam weapon? And it's just like this big, giant monolithic script with a whole bunch of options. And I guess that's easy when you're just using somebody else's script like you're just taking it, you're not really looking at the code, you're not modifying it, you're just popping it in there and then setting some stuff on there. But when you want to build your own systems and your own code, it can become what I would call a giant nightmare. So having a big giant script that does a whole lot is generally pretty damn terrible once it comes down to actually making your game. Now, like I said, if you're using somebody else's system and you don't need to modify it, you just want to use it as it is, it doesn't really matter if it's if you're treating it like a black box that just works and does what it needs to do and you don't have to code anything. But if you are building your own systems, what I generally recommend is splitting out all of the functionality as much as possible and then composing your game objects and your systems out of these smaller scripts. So as an example, I just pulled up the weapon from my VR course. And if you look here, I've got just a weapon script, which doesn't really do anything on its own. You couldn't just have this weapon script on its own because it needs other ways to do things. It needs other components that do things. For instance, this one just does a direct shot. So it's not a projectile launcher. It's just doing a ray cast, finding something. So it has a weapon raycaster component and its only responsibility is to do the raycast and tell the system if it hit anything. Right? Uh, I've got particles because I want to do muzzle flashes. So just add a weapon particle system and now that thing can do particles however I want. If I want to do different types of particle systems for this, I just swap out that script with another one that handles the particle drawing. So I don't know exactly what kind of different particle system I might want to do but I'm positive that there could be other systems. I may not want to have a muzzle flash at all. In fact, like a beam weapon, right? I wouldn't want to have something where I do a muzzle flash and I just have a point. I'd probably want to have a system that does a long beam and just shows that particle. And in fact, my raycaster would be slightly different for a beam weapon too. It'd probably be like a weapon beam raycaster that just does a raycast off of the beam continuously instead of just when you pull the trigger. Um, I've got things for like weapon animation, which just handles doing the animations for this weapon. So it's totally separated off from the script. We don't have to have our weapon animate if we don't want to. And if our weapon isn't animating, then it's pointless to have code in our weapon that's doing animation stuff when there's nothing to do. I don't want to just have empty fields there. There's an audio script. So this one, again, is more of a basic gun shooting weapon audio, but again, we could have weapons where you hold down the trigger, we could have weapons that are completely silent, you know, and they wouldn't have these same fields, right? We would have a, a variety there. And this is, like I said, just a, a small example of composing the game objects. And in fact, here, I'll go over one more, like the weapon ammo. This, this gun is just a regular gun, so it's got a clip, it's got a clip size, and some starting ammo amount and a reload time plenty of cases where I'd want to have just an unlimited weapon ammo and then in that case actually let me just pull up the damn code so in that case instead of going through and dealing with ammo loading and reloading and everything when I did my checks to see if the weapon had ammo I could just 
return true. I could just have another weapon ammo script. Let me just scroll down here. So there's like this method right here, has ammo in clip. All I'd have to do is have another weapon ammo script that does something similar, but just returns true if I wanted to have unlimited ammo. Right. And um, just having all of this stuff split off makes it really easy to kind of build up your own game objects, not have just one, like I said, big monolithic thing. I can compose different types of weapons and reuse the code and not go into a big script and start adding a bunch of if statements and switches and other just messy crap that's going to turn into a nightmare eventually. So keeping it split off is great. Having lots of components is generally a good thing. Now, of course, there's some limit if you get to, you know, you've got it all the way down to here. You've got 20 components on here. You might want to start worrying. You might think like, hey, do I really need all of these components? Why is this one game object doing this much? And there could be use cases for it where it makes sense. But sometimes it's, you know, like anything, you can go overboard. One other thing, though, that um, I guess I like to have is I like to minimize the number of settings on things. So here we go. If I scroll, expand some of these out, you can see like each one of these has just a couple of settings so that they're relatively easy to understand what they're doing. There's not like a, a big box of settings. Uh, you could build a custom editor for it to make it manageable, but if you don't, it can get really, really hard to tell where the hell things go and what all of your options actually are. Here, they're relatively split off. So I've got, you know, on the weapon haptics, I have the two settings for haptic feedback, and that's it. And if I want to just not have haptic feedback, I'm just turn that off or remove it, right? So overall, I'd just say that the Unity system is really built to allow you to make composable objects. That's why there's a whole component system here. And taking advantage of that is kind of key to making it easy to build a bigger, extensible, and easy to update project. So if you're looking at your project and you don't have very many scripts, you have a single script on every single game object, definitely reconsider that. And if you think maybe you have too many, you, you might, but you might not, you might be all right. So I hope this is somewhat helpful answering some questions on this subject. Um, if you have some feedback or more questions about you know, components and just composing game objects in general, feel free to reach out to me at unity3d.college or drop a comment below. And again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and hit subscribe.